Hello, and my name is Lowell Vanderpool, and this channel is dedicated to IT professionals, IT students, and anyone who's interested in technical subjects. Today, we are working more and more online, whether we're dealing with a desktop computer, a laptop, or a mobile device. One issue that is growing concern and is a concern of individuals, companies, and governments is privacy and identity and where data, personal data, is stored. This is something that we want to take a hard look at and see what things you can do to manage that, control that, both on folks that need extreme control of this to folks that need maybe a mild version of enhancing their privacy and identity information. Let's take a quick look at our discussion on online privacy. On part one, the video, first video, we're going to look at legislative effort to curb privacy abuse by companies. And what are the vectors of privacy leakage when working online? We'll look at operating systems, browsers, and applications. And who needs what level of privacy protection? For some people, it's going to be more. For some, it's going to be less. We're going to look at the LTSC version of Windows 10 and why it can be an option to to help improve both privacy and security. We're going to look at third-party tools to help reduce privacy leakage on any version of Windows 10. We're going to look at DNS vendors and VPNs. Part two, we're going to look at the second part of our video will be focused on data and privacy leakage at the browser. Remember, the browser is the most used application in computing today. Comparing the new Edge Chromium browser to Chrome and to Firefox. And this will be primarily in the Windows world. Browser extensions that add limited privacy enhancements, application firewalls for Windows and Android, and for the extreme individual who's looking for maximum privacy and identity uh, protection, I'll give you some good ideas for that one. Although I am starting off with PowerPoints, we'll quickly get to hands-on, and this will be a technical discussion as we get further down the road. Legislative efforts to curb privacy abuse by companies. A number of legislative actions have happened recently. One, the California Consumer Privacy Act, and companies are beginning to respond to this new legislation. And of course, the European Union's GDPR has impacted almost every international company. These key legislation and compliant regulations focus on privacy of the individual's data. So governments are very concerned about this issue. There's actually an a request for comments, an RFC 6973, that was produced by the IETF that is focused entirely on privacy considerations for the inter internet protocols. It talks about massive monitoring on a, as a widespread attack on privacy, surveillance, privacy threats. It's a well worth read if you want to look up RFC 6973. Some individuals need greater control over their privacy than others. Some need an extreme amount of control. Some need just basic. Maybe they need to make some changes on how they work online. Step up control over their privacy and who has access to their data. Let's take a look at the vectors of privacy leakage when working online. Three vectors of privacy data leakage are very simply operating systems, and that could be mobile phones as well as operating systems you run on your laptops or PCs. Browsers are a big concern, and especially on the mobile side, applications can be extreme form of data and privacy leakage on your mobile phones. So who needs what type of level of privacy protection? Well, everybody is different. Your personal need for privacy will vary based on the individual. If you're an individual hiding from domestic abuse, you may need extreme protection in privacy and identity information while working online. If you're an aggressive person that wants to take a more proactive step on your operating system, your browser and applications, you can definitely do that. You may do something mild, something that's just moved from Google to DuckDuckGo or something of, of simple nature as that. And then, of course, there's the clueless. I thought State Farm didn't have all those apps. Where'd you hear that? The internet. And you believed it? Yeah. 
They can't put anything on the internet that isn't true. Where'd you hear that? The, the internet. internet. Oh, look. Here comes my date. I met him on the internet. He's a French model. Uh, bonjour. I doubt very seriously that my lectures will help that young lady. Back to operating systems. Windows 10 has improved many issues relating to privacy leakage. Many feel that they haven't done enough. Linux is a superior platform when it comes to privacy. There is very little known privacy or data leakage on the Linux platforms. Mac OS and iOS are tightly controlled by Apple, who appears to be more responsible with personal data, although not perfect. Android for the mobile side has improved due to public pressure on Google to do so. Let's take a look at LTSC version of Windows 10 and why it has the potential of improving privacy and security. As I mentioned before, Microsoft has improved privacy on its platform, but many critics feel like they haven't done enough. Let's take a look at a version of Windows 10 that lays a foundation to provide a better platform for security and reliability and improved privacy. My goal in these type of lectures are never to sway your opinion or to get you to buy something or to look at a particular software package. My goal is to broaden your horizons, explain some technology, help you maybe put some things on your radar that you haven't looked at before. But ultimately, it's your decision and your responsibility to do the homework, do the research, and see, does this product, does this version of Windows work for you? Long-term service channel is a relatively newcomer to the Windows portfolio of operating systems. It is designed for where your key requirement is that functionality and features don't change over time. They also strip out a lot of unnecessary items from the operating system that you just don't necessarily need. Yet, they still have manageability and security, patching, and all of those things you do want for your operating system. The LTS, LTSC offers 10 years of support and the promise that functions and features will not change over the life cycle of that 10 years. So what what does LTSC not have? Well, one, it doesn't have an Edge browser. It doesn't have the Microsoft Store. It doesn't have OneDrive, Cortana, the digital pen, and the ink workspace. It has no Microsoft Store apps installed. It also doesn't support any of the YouTube videos, Netflix, Amazon video streaming. It really is functional business and possibly personal lap platform for Windows 10. It also requires a fresh install. It has no upgrade capability. The LTSC versions right now are three. The latest one is 2019 and it's based off the 1809 version of Windows. Every two or three years they build a new version. So you could install one on a Dell laptop and by the time that Dell laptop is replaced you could buy a new laptop and put a new version of LTSE and you're going to have a stable platform throughout the life cycle of that platform. Our topic is concerned privacy and obviously security. We're always interested in that. And you can look at, I've used Process Explorer and I've looked at a clean copy of Windows 10 Enterprise, just a regular copy of Windows 10 Enterprise, clean install. And I compare that to a clean install of LTSC. And you can see the threads, handles, and processes on the LTSC are, are lower, significantly lower. So I'm going to have a smaller memory footprint, less services and processes is running, it's going to be out of the box a leaner version of Windows 10. Looking at the two versions of Windows 10 Enterprise from a services point of view, you can see with a copy of LTSC and Windows 10, I've got 81 services running. On Windows 10 Enterprise, your standard version, I have over 90 services running. Now, a great PowerShell commandlet is get service pipe out grid view. Try it. It's a really cool way of looking at your services. I encourage you to check it out. If you want a great PowerShell alternative to services.msc, which is the old control panel service. It's a great thing. It's like a spreadsheet view of your services. It has sort at the top of the column. And of course, if you don't want to type in all that commandlet for PowerShell, you can just type the aliases, which is GSV pipe OGV. And you've got your commandlet for services. Now I have VMs where I have Windows NT Enterprise installed, just your typical Windows NT Enterprise. And I also have the LTSC Enterprise version. If we go to the Enterprise version, and I just go to Start, you can see the store items are listed here. And if I go to All Settings and go to the Apps, 
can see there's a lot of applications that are installed and this is typical of Windows. Now if I go to LTSC and I go to the start menu, it's really ugly. It's lean and there's not much here. If I go to all settings and I go to apps, you notice there's no apps here at all. So you can begin to see right away there is a cleaner version of Windows 10 on the LTSC side. Now Windows 10 Enterprise or Business do provide under Settings. I'm going to go under the Settings area and you can come under Privacy. And there is a number of areas, General, Speech, Inking and Typing, Personalization, Diagnostics, Feedback, Activity and Location. All of these are elements that for someone who just wants some mild improvements of privacy, you can go in in there and adjust those. Those are good places to start, but in most cases, they're not going to give you anywhere near the kind of privacy you probably need. So let's take a look at third-party tools. And first of all, let's look at what third-party tool do we want to look at? How do we use a criteria in choosing third-party tools? Because they're going to go more under the hood and do a better job of tweaking Microsoft Windows 10 to where it really gives us a greater level of privacy and security. So let's look at third-party tools to reduce privacy leakage on any version of Windows 10, including LTSE. So anytime I'm selecting a third party tool, there's a couple criteria that I'm looking for in that software company. One, does the software developer attract serious corporate customers? Do they support portable versions of their software? When I say portable, that means they don't require installation. They simply can be executed, run, and do what you need to do them. You can actually put them on a flash drive, remove them off the platform, and use that same software again on another platform. Is the software cost reasonable? Is there a free version? A version and the track record of the company over time. So all of those go into selecting third-party tools. In the wide variety of privacy tools for Windows 10, here are some of the ones that I discovered. O&O Shut Up 10, it's a free version portable. It's my preferred version of third-party apps, and I'll show you why. WPD Real Privacy Dashboard, Windows Spy Blocker, Do Not Spy 10, and Win 10 Privacy. Now I have all kinds of notes to all of these various tools. If you download the notes, you can get web addresses and you can look them up on Google also. Most of these tools use GPOs and registry edits to lock down Windows or restrict the privacy leakage that's going on in Windows 10. Make sure you always do a restore point before using the software. For some users, you want to do a backup. Use the tools cautiously. You can always increase control later. If things break, Use your restore points, return to normal, and try again very cautiously. Don't get crazy and turn on everything that this particular tool gives you and just tear up Jack because you'll usually find it breaks a lot of things and now you've got to go back and fix them. So be cautious. These tools can give you a lot of control over privacy leakage and add security in Windows 10. So this is the third party tool that I'm going to use. It's the OOSU10 software package that we just looked at. But before I start, I'm going to start with a restore point. Go ahead and launch that. In this case, Windows 10 does not have restore points turned on, so we're going to go ahead and configure this. Turn on, restore protection. Uh, I'm going to give a little bit more disk space, apply, OK. And we're going to create a restore point, and I'm going to call this. So I'll remember this is before any privacy settings were done. We'll go ahead and set, basically this backs up your registry and it will have, we'll have a backup copy of our registry so we can go back if we break something later down the road. So we've got that restore point. Let's go ahead and launch the software. Notice we do not have to install. This is a portable app. Now it's, it has things where you can say apply only recommended settings and that's a good place to start. It's going to give you a lot better privacy and it's going to impact your system in the least amount of way. So if you want just a basic safe approach to setting up your privacy on a much better level than you can ever do through settings, you can use this apply only recommended settings and this is a great place to start. If you do the extreme apply all settings, you're probably going to break some things that you may want. You definitely want to have that restore point, maybe even a backup before you do all settings. Just keep that in mind. I'm going to apply only recommended settings. It says you definitely should create a restore point, which we did, and we'll say yes. And in this case, it's going to go ahead and create a one again, which is fine. It's better. And notice it's went ahead and enabled. You can see all the ones that are green. The uh, buttons are now green for all the recommended elements that give you better privacy. 
So you can take a look at this. You can get the software yourself and take a look at all the things that it does. It really uh, is a much better and much improved version of Windows 10 in terms of privacy. So this is a great tool. Third party portable app gives you the flexibility of getting a much higher level of privacy. And if it breaks something that you really, really need, you can always go back, do a restore point, do a more granular version of that. But th this is a great way to get started with some privacy on Windows 10. Now this software does warn you that if you have an update, it can push back some of these privacy settings back to their defaults. So you can run ONO Shut Up 10 again, and it will show you anywhere where that change was made and go ahead and reinforce those settings. So just be aware updates can go back and restore some default settings in privacy. Also, some of these settings that we made in this change require a reboot, so you do want to go ahead and restart Windows. Let's talk about DNS. So I have a diagram of a PC, and it's gonna to go to example.com, and it's going to find a D DNS resolver, and typically this resolving of your DNS is going to be done by your ISP. This could be your carrier for your mobile phone, say AT&T or T-Mobile. For your home, it could be Comcast, or CenturyLink or Spectrum is providing your DNS resolver. So you're at home, you're gonna to go to example.com, you are going to use your ISP's DNS resolver. That DNS resolver is going to go out and find the root server, top level domain server, then the, the actual server for example.com and then send that information to your browser and it would send you to the location that you need to go to find that website. So the moral of this story is that whoever, whoever owns this DNS resolver can monitor every website you go to. This is privacy leakage. So if this is Comcast or Spectrum, whenever you go to any website, because you use their DNS resolver, they know every website you go to. This is something you want to stop, and it's a simple solution. Now there are many public DNS providers. I'm going to focus on Cloudflare because they are first very fast at queries. They're also, they have a strong privacy policy. So instead of using my ISP to query for websites for me, I prefer to use Cloudflare to do it. They're not going to harvest my, my data. They're not going to sell it to anyone. So that's the DNS resolver that I want to use. So how do I do this? I've got my mode them from my ISP and then I have my wireless router. Your home may be slightly different, but if you have a setup like this, which a lot of you do, let's take a look at how to get rid of your ISP as your resolver DNS and start using a more private DNS service. Cloudflare provides a number of IP addresses that you can use for DNS services. If you want to protect your home just against malware and privacy, you can use these IP addresses. They have both IP version 4 and IP version 6. If you want to block both malware and adult content, which in my case, I want to protect my family from both. So I'm going to use the 1.1.3, 1.003, and I'm going to use these IP addresses to provide both privacy and block those unwanted services. Now I'm going to go to my router and I'm in the firmware of my router at home. And I'm going to go down here to the internet connection and I'm going to go to advanced. And I'm going to first not use the DNS resolver from my iPhone. ISP. So I don't want to use my ISP's resolver. Instead, I'm going to use Cloudflare. So my router will always go to Cloudflare to get any DNS information. So in this case, I put 1.1.1.3. And for a secondary DNS, I've done 1.0.0.3. I'm going to save that. I'm not done, but I've just got started. I'm not using my ISP at all. Then I'm going to come down to my, my DHCP server. And here, every, every device on my home network is going to get an IP address and DNS information for each of those clients, laptops, desktops, mobile phones. And I'm going to, again, not use my ISP. I'm going to use 1.1.1.3, 1.0.0.3. And I'm going to, that way, everybody that gets an IP address from my home router is going to get Cloudflare as their private DNS service. So I'm going to save that. Now, everybody that connects to my home router, pulls an IP address, 
is going to be using Cloudflare as their DNS resolver. Now the same problem exists on your mobile phone. For example, if you have T-Mobile or AT&T, they again are providing your DNS resolving services so they can monitor your website surfing. You can take them out of the equation by downloading the Cloudflare 1.1.1 plus warp app either on Google Play or the Apple Store and you can set it up so now your phone will use Cloudflare for its DNS services. You also can get a just a slide with your finger and add VPN to your phone. So this is a great feature that's free from Cloudflare that gives you privacy on your phone, privacy on your desktops, and in your home network. So check this out. There are other DNS services that you can that you can take advantage of. I'll show you those at the end of this video. In wrapping up video one on privacy, you can see I could spend literally 10, 15 videos on privacy alone. Privacytools.io is a great website for additional information on a variety of privacy tools, more DNS services that are primarily focused on privacy, VPN services that provide a great deal of privacy, email, web browsers, operating systems, privacy tools. So this is a great website for you that need, some of you that need much more privacy than, than say the average individual. Probably every single person needs to step up their privacy data leakage and curtail that to a great degree. There's no reason that companies have as much information about us as they do. And it's primarily because we're not taking these steps. In our upcoming second video, we're going to be looking at data and privacy leakage at the browser. This is a huge problem. We're going to look at the New Edge Chromium browser, Chrome, and Firefox. We're going to look at under the hood. I'm going to use a lot of system internal tools to look at these browsers and compare them. We're going to look at browser extensions that add limited privacy enhancements and application firewalls that are very interesting for Windows and in the Android environment. And then point you in the direction for you that are interested in some extreme privacy and identity protection.